Hi there, everyone. My name is Jaku Jacobs, and it's a very great honor to be speaking to you this afternoon. Of course, I would have loved joining you in a real exclusive books branch or um, visiting you at your school, but unfortunately, due to the pandemic, Zoom uh, book meetings are what we are doing at the moment. Um, dames and heren, ek gaan vandag die die sessie tweetalig aanbied, want ek gaan oor Afrikaanse boeken praat en ek gaan oor Engelse boeken praat. So, uh, the English uh, listeners or English uh, audience, uh, some, a part of this uh, presentation will be in Afrikaans. Uh, we'll be doing more or less 50% Afrikaans, 50% English due to the books that I'm discussing. Dit was vir my een ongelooflike groot voorrecht om vir die afgelopen 20 jaar Afrikaanse boeken vir kinders te kon skryf. Um, it's amazing to think that it's been 20 years since the publication of my first children's books. The time has absolutely flown and I can honestly say that I've had the greatest fun this past 20 years creating books for children. You know, titles like these brightly colored ones on the screen behind me. And I would like to start off by saying a huge thank you, first off, to Exclusive Books for presenting uh, this children's book month. I think, um, especially during this pandemic, uh, we've become aware of how extremely important books for children are. Um, ek self het twee klein dochterkies en ek het rechtig besef wat er groot rol kinders in hierdie uh, boeken en hierdie daak kan speel om ons kinders te vermaak, om hulle bezig te hou, om vir hulle te sê, jy is nie alleen in hierdie wereld nie. In die tyd wat ons baie keer maar een bykie alleen en afgesonder gevoel het. Maar nou ja, dit is nie nodig om vandag oor negatieve dinge te praat nie, want ek is van plan om vir die volgende half uur pret saam met julle te hee. Dit was vir my die afgelopen 20 jaar, die lekkerste deel van my werk was pret te hee. En ek dink hierdie helder kleurige voorblaai, wat julle achter my op die skerm kan sien, is ook so'n bykie van die getuienis van hoeveel pret kinderboeken kan wees. Um, so first off, I'm going to tell you about a few of my brand new books that have been appearing at Ban Macmillan Publishers and are part of a special promotion that Exclusive Books has in their Children's Book Month. The first uh, books that I want to show you uh, is a series that I've been writing for the past few years. It started out as an Afrikaans series about a boy called Zaki Mostert. Now, Zaki Mostert is one of those poor kids who's forever getting into trouble. You know kids like those, you know? Um, they're good boys, but they keep getting into trouble. Zaki and his best friend, Vincent, live in the same street. And in their street, uh, there are, there's a bully living there, a guy called... Brett burns and Brett is making life very difficult for uh, Zaki for Zach and Vincent. Um, in, in English, uh, he's called Zach. And then next door, there's an old lady living uh, who makes life difficult for them as well. Uh, her name is Mrs. Longbottom. And Mrs. Longbottom is one of those uh, old ladies who doesn't like kids at all. And she dislikes Zaki's dog, uh, Frankenstein who comes to visit regularly and leaves all sorts of unpleasant surprises on her lawn. Now, the Zaki Mostert books have been translated into English recently. Um, the first three books are published in this uh, omnibus, and it's called Zack Attack. And there on the front cover, you can see Zack and his friends uh, getting up to so all sorts of adventures. As I said, there's three different stories in this book. And the second volume of three stories is called Zack is Back. And with these stories, I really tried to write the kind of uh, books that I would have enjoyed as a nine or a ten year old boy. You know, stories full of mischief and adventure and humor. I'm, I'm one of those authors who really believe if you can make a kid laugh, you know, uh, I remember when I was small, you had those books that you couldn't put down just because they were so funny. And I believe if you can make a kid laugh, then you are making a reader out of him or her. And that was what I wanted to try with the Zack series. Goed, dan en nog een splinter nieuwe reeks wat ek geskryf het. Uh, ek het nog gesê, ek het oor die jare baie boeke oor Zakkiese avontiere geskryf. Um, die Zakkie boeke word door Sienkies en Dochterkies gelees, maar die hoofdkarakter is natuurlijk een Sienkie. En um, omdat ek self twee dochterkies in huis het, was ek al baie lang van plan om een reeks vir dochterkies te skryf. Nou weer eens, dit klink vreselijk stereotyperend, ek bedoel glad nie dat die boeken nie door seensboek gelees kan word en daar gelees word nie, maar ek wil een reeks skryf um, waar die hoofdkarakter een meisie is, 
wat al dan avontuur is saam met haar vriendinne beleef, en wat vir vriendskap en gaan, en so my net oor doodgewone dinge, wat kinders soos my, ne, soos my twee dochterkies, by een school beleef. Um, en van het ek die eerste oomlikkie voor my rekenaar kom sit, en in hierdie reeks geskryf het, was dit vir my ongelooflik een groot pre. Um, die reeks naam is die Minky reeks, en daar is nou vier titels in hierdie reeks. Die niets te tweet nou pas verskyn, en hierdie boeken is hierdie maand uh, op een speciale aanbod by Exclusive Books beskikbaar. Um, die eerste eense naam is uh, Minky in die middel, en in hierdie boek moet Minky een vreselike belangrike besluit maak. Minky sê die beste maatse naam is Natalie en Lara. Nou, Natalie is maal oor perdrui en Lara is maal oor dans, sy neem dansklas. Nou, op een dag vraag Lara vir uh, Minky of sy sy bed die saterdag sal kom kyk wanneer Lara een baie belangrike danskompetitie uh, het waar sy deelneem. En Natalie vraag vir Minky of sy sy bed sal kom kyk want sy wat Natalie is gaan aan een ponyrui kompetitie deelneem. En Minky is een baie goede vriendin, so sy sê vir altyd van hulle ja. En dan vind sy uit al by kompetities vind op die selfde tyd plaas hoe op die aarde gaan sy tussen haar twee beste vriendinne kies. Julle sien, dit is die soort van dilemma's, wat vir ons as volwassen is, dat nooit gewoon goed klink, maar wat baie belangrik is in een kind, en een dochterkie soos my in sy wereld. En dit is waarom ek hierdie boeken geskryf het. Die tweede in die reeks, sy naam is Minky se Pajama Partijkie, uh, en dan die twee wat pas verskyn het, is Minky se Skoolkoncert, en Minky se Avontuurkamp. Nou, ek het al baie recensies van boeken oor my leven, van my boeken gekry in my leven. Mens is altyd benauwd as jy recensie, as jy korant vir thuiskrif oopmaak, en daar is een recensie van jou boeken. Maar ek moet sê, van die minkie boeken betref, het ek die vleienste recensie gekry, wat ek in my hele leven gekry het. My dochterkie was baie opgewonde, my oudste dochter, toe sy minkie in die middel die eerste keer die boeken na hand kan vasthou, is die baie mooi pink omslag, so ek het van die prentkie gehou en so, so sy dadelijk begin lees. En een ochend, en sy so vannacht is moet ek al ontbijt klaar gelees, en sy verdwijn. En ek roep haar toe later, want sy moet kom tandenboos wat aantrek, en sy kom so aangestap met die boek in haar hand, terwyl sy lees. En die volgende oomlik stap sy recht in die deur koosijn vast. En ek beloof jylle, dit is die beste recensie wat ek in my hele leven van enige boek van my gekry het. Ek het oor die jare, um, ek, ek was van kleins af op baie eiwerig gelees. I devoured every book in the library uh, from the age of seven when I started reading. And my love of reading began with funny books in the first place and with horror stories in the second place. I remember when I was nine years old, I walked up to the librarian. We had a very strict uh, librarian in the small garoot down where I grew up. I was dead scared of that lady, but it didn't keep me away from the library. And I walked up to her with a Stephen King book. I remember it was Stephen King's horror novel, Christine. And I put it on the counter. And she peered over her glasses and told me to go put it back. And what happened is that my mum went and took out the book for me, checked out the book for me. And at the end of grade three, the old standard one, I actually read my first Stephen King book, which is absolutely not something you should let your kids do, but I'm really glad that my mom allowed me to, to read Christine, even though I probably couldn't understand half of the book, because that's where my love of horror stories and scary stories and spooky stories uh, started. And I know some people don't like the kids uh, reading scary books and I have respect for that but you also find kids that love scary books you know stuff like the goosebumps books or horror stories or ghost stories and sometimes those books are the only way to get them reading and to engage them in a book now about two years back I started writing a series uh, a scary series which was probably uh, one of my favorite things that I ever did uh, the book aren't actually that scary. Um, the horror is very much downplayed. But it's a book, a series of books about a boy called Valdu. Valdu is a doodgewone ookie, hy en sy ma, maar hy wil alleen saam met sy ma. Valdu is a pa, het a paar jaar gelede spoorloos verdwijn. Selfs die politie weet nie meer waarom na om te soek nie. En Valdu is a baie eenzame kind. Hy is a bykie van a buitenstander by die school. Um, hulle blij met die hoge woonstelblok en elke nou en dan gaan sit Waldo boe by die woonstelblok en hy het speciale papiervliegtuigies geleer vir op een specifieke manier en dan gooi hy een vir een die papiervliegtuigies daar van die woonstelblok sy dak af terwijl hy in sy hondspanner daar sit Waldo sy ma is sy loodgieter um, 
En dan hoop hy hierdie vliegtuig is kom op een manier by sy pa uit. Maar dan begin daar baie vreemde goed met Waldo gebeur. Daar is vier boeken in die reeks, en in elkeen van hierdie vier boeken ontmoet Waldo een baie vreemde mythologische karakter of grolstorie karakter. Um, en die eerste boek in die reeks, sy naam is Waldo en die Veerwolf met die rooi tekkies. Dan is daar Waldo en die draak met die groen tong. En in elke van die boeken moet Waldo een monster help. In die eerste boek moet hy help om uh, een weerwolf dan nie help om haar klein sien in die handen te kry wat in een weerwolf verander. En Waldo die draak met die groen tong moet Waldo een gesteelde draak eier terug kry. Dan staat Waldo en die meermin met die blau haren waarin Waldo moet uitvind waarop die aarde tree meerminne af. En jy kan nie iets soos een aftree oort vir meerminne nie. En dan die laaste boek in die reeks is Waldo en die vampier met die geel reenjas. Nou recht hier, dis, die dag gaan net vier boeken in die reeks wees, daar is nie nog boeken op pad nie, die story eindig in die vierde boek, want recht hier in die vier boeken loop daar die raaisel van Waldo se paas en verdwijne en wat van hom geword het. En in die laaste boek um, kan die lezers miskien uitvind uh, wat die geheim van Waldo se paas en verdwijne is. Um, mense vraag baie keer vir my, wat is die lekkerste deel van skryf? En ek moet sê, um, skryf is harde werk. Vir my is het baie lekker om idees te kryf vir stories, en om idees um, op die oude een story te maak, maar die heel lekkerste deel, moet ek dood eerlijk sê, is die dag wanneer die prentjie skryf. Ek het nou vir gesê, achter my is ek een mooie illustraties op die voorblaie, en dit is, my uitgever weet al, dit is my absolute gunsteling deel van skryf, is die dag gesê vir my prentjie stien, die prentjie is vir my mooi. En dit is natuurlijk waarom ek mal is daar om prente boeken te skryf, uh, boeken vir die heel kleinkies, wat die mens nog lekker vir hulle voorlees, en onthou, my mens hoef nie net vir kleinkies voor te lees nie, ek lees nog steeds vir my kinders voor, maar ek is mal daar om prente boeken te skryf. Nou hierdie een, sy naam is Moenie die melk vergeet nie. En dit gaan oor die dochterkie met die naam Mila, wat op die dag saam met haar pa moet die supermarkt toe gaan. En hulle moet vanaf weglip, hulle moet melk gaan koop. Nou dit klink na verveelige uitstappie, maar Mila is een baie avontuurlistige dochterkie. En sy besluit, vandag rij hulle nie met die kar nie, hulle gaan op een eenhoring paard rij. En uh, hulle gaan nie na die supermarkt toe nie, hulle gaan na die superheldmarkt toe. En... Uh, daar beleef hulle ander aan die avontuur, hulle ontmoet draak, hulle gaan op een ruimte avontuur, maar die groot vraag is natuurlijk, gaan hulle die melk onthou? Hierdie is een lekker lachstory wat ek geskryf het vir uh, die voorlees, en hier is prachtige, prachtige illustraties binnen. Nou goed, dit sal net so'n voorsmaak hier van van die nieuwe boeken wat ek geskryf het, maar waarvoor het eindelijk natuurlijk vandag hier is, is om te praat oor twee boeke, waarop exclusive books graag een beetje die focus wil laat val. Nou, die, the first one is a book that's been translated from the Afrikaans by a wonderful translator who has worked with a lot of my books. His name is Kobus Geldenijs. And this book is probably one of my favorite books that I've ever written. And it's not because I think that I'm a brilliant author or anything. It's just that I had so, so much fun writing this book. I really fell in love with these characters. And um, it, they feel so real to me that I wouldn't be surprised if I walked into one of them uh, in the street someday. This book is called Grandpa Zombie. It's also available in Afrikaans as Opa Zombie. And it's a story about a boy called Alex. Now, Alex is not the most popular kid at school. His parents, even his parents, have just moved to a city. He doesn't have uh, many friends. His only friends are a pair of twins in his class who occasionally sit with him at break time or pick him for a sports team when they have sports period at school. One day, Alex is in class and everyone is doing oral about the uh, previous holiday, what they did the holidays. Everyone's telling about trips to Cape Town or Durban to watch cricket. Everyone had the most exciting holiday imaginable. But Alex has nothing to tell. He spent the entire holiday uh, with his grandfather at their house. And they didn't go anywhere. They just sat there in front of the television watching travel programs on TV. And Alex is getting more and more nervous while he listens to the other kids talking because he knows everyone's going to laugh at his oral if he tells them what he did this holiday. And then when Alex's name is called and he walks to the front of the class, he does a terrible thing. He tells three whoppingly big lies. He tells the class that this past holiday, uh, him and his family 
visited Egypt and they saw the pyramids and the mummies and they even rode on camels. And that's not all. They also visited the Victoria waterfall. And to top it off, they had a trip in a hot air balloon. Now the entire class is ooing and eyeing and thinking this is wonderful. But then the twins who know Alex stick up their hands and they are about to expose his lies. But then the intercom starts buzzing and the head teacher makes a shocking announcement. She tells everyone that a zombie virus just broke out in the city and everyone has to go home immediately. So Alex is literally saved by the bell. That's what happens in the first chapter. Um, uh, uh, in the beginning, everyone suspects that it was a uh, lice in the station that kept them, uh, that had them going home, but they soon find out that's not what happened. Chapter two is called Cooler Than Lice. Alex's mom and dad fetched him from school. Did you hear? Yeah, asked Alex excitedly when he got into the car. There's a freaky virus on the loose. It changes people into zombies. So there won't be school for the rest of the week. The news had spread through the school like wildfire. Zombies are much cooler than lice. Really? said his dad, sounding so bored that you think Alex had shared an extremely uninteresting fact about the nutritional value of walnuts. He impatiently glanced at his cell phone. We have to get back to work. I honestly can't understand why the school called us at this time of the day. We were on our way to an important meeting. Doesn't the school realize that people are in important meetings? Well, I think it's absolutely fantastic, said his mum happily. I can't wait to meet them. Do you think we should take them out to dinner? Alex frowned. Why on earth would his mum want to take zombies out to dinner? But then he realized that she hadn't been listening to him at all. She was talking to someone on her phone. Dad, do you think the zombies will? Alex tried to ask, but then his dad's phone rang. He tapped on a small cordless microphone in his ear and started talking about things like inflation and interest rates and investment prospects as the car sped away. Sighing, Alex leaned back in his seat. The car wove impatiently through the traffic and a couple of minutes later stopped at their house. Alex got out. See you later, said Alex's dad. If we need to work late, you and grandpa will have to order takeaways. Call all the pharmacies in the neighborhood, said his mum. There's a list of numbers on my desk. Alex frowned. Why the heck would he order takeaways from a pharmacy? But then he realized that his mum was still on the phone. With a sigh, Alex heaved his school bag onto his shoulder and started walking towards the front door. The previous year, his parents had decided to start their own business. That was why the had to move to the city. Among other products, Core Cosmetics manufactured cream that makes wrinkles disappear, shampoo that makes dandruff disappear, deodorant that makes body odors disappear, foot powder that makes fungi between your foot toes disappear. Sometimes it seemed to Alex that Core Cosmetics had made his parents disappear as well. From the moment they opened their eyes in the morning, Until they went to, bed, went to bed at night, they were always on their phones. Some evenings, Alex was already in bed by the time his parents came home. If it hadn't been for his grandfather, he would have had no one to speak to after school. Gramps, I'm home, he called. Hi, his grandpa's voice came from the TV room. Grandpa didn't really talk much. He'd had a stroke two years ago. Since then, he only said one word at a time. That actually worked surprisingly well. Grandpa chose his words very carefully, and most of the time he understood perfectly what he said. Also, he didn't use a lot of words. Alex had made a list of the words that Grandpa used most often. RF, Grandpa's abbreviation for rocket fuel. TV, chutney. I, so, bye. Yes, no. Here, there, brilliant, thunderation, hush, twaddle, hogwash, and bosh. And uh, one or two words that you should rather not mention in a decent book like this. Grandpa was sitting in front of the TV, flicking through the channels with the remote control. Hi, Gramps, Alex said and made himself comfortable on the couch. What are we watching? 
grandpa was scowling at the news video on TV. Twaddle, he said, and changed the channel. Wait, Alex stopped him. I want to hear what they say about the zombies. Have you heard, Gramps? There's a virus around that changes people into zombies. Grandpa frowned. Hogwash. No, honest, said Alex. That's why I came home early today. The school will be closed all week. Grandpa smiled broadly. Brilliant, he bellowed. Alex grinned. He knew Grandpa didn't like sitting at home alone all day. He but he loved laughing. Sometimes, they, if, when there was something funny on TV, he'd laugh so hard that his false teeth flew out. Alex kicked off his school shoes and put his feet on the coffee table. A program about Christmas Island was on TV. For a while, he and his grandfather watched in silence. When the program had finished, Grandpa looked at Alex. Arif, he said. Alex smiled. Grandpa loved strong coffee, which he called rocket fuel. His favorite coffee shop was home brew. It was only two blocks away. He and Alex walked there every Saturday morning. Grandpa thought their coffee was brilliant. And they also made yummy sandwiches and milkshakes. Um, but it's not Saturday. And what about the zombies? Asked Alex. Grandpa let out a snort on the way to the front door and grumbled, Bosh! As you can guess, bad things are about to happen. Alex's grandpa gets bitten by a zombie in the coffee shop. And Alex knows that if you turn into a zombie, the zombie police will soon come to fetch you and take you to the zombie jail. And Alex has to make a plan to save his grandfather from the zombie police. Um, I think this is one of the most exciting adventures that I've ever written. And as I've said before, I had so much fun writing this book. Good, the last book waarvan ek julle baie graag vandag wil vertel, is a book met Afrikaanse kinder ruimpies. Nou ek het so'n paar jaar gelede begin om ruimpies te skryf en van die eerste oomlik dat ek het begin doen het, was het seker die grootste pret wat ek in my skryfloobaan kon hee. Ek geniet het ontzaggelijk baie om kinderverse te skryf, dit is een heerlijke kreatieve proces en daar is vir my niks so lekker, soos om ruimpies te skryf wat kinders lang met lach nie. Hierdie is my nietste ruimpie boek en sy naam is Ek wil nou nie snaaks wees. En hierdie boek is dan meer as 60 snaakse ruimpies. En ek gaan afsluit en vir julle so paar van hulle lees. Hierdie ruimpiese naam is Hou op om jou toonaals te kou. Ach nee man, hou op om jou toonaals te kou. Dit is een nare gewoonte wat slecht is vir jou. As jy aanhou daarmee, gaan jou toone naar lyk. As jy aanhou daarmee, gaan jou asem goor ruik. Daak verrek jy jou nek of jou enkel verstuit, daar is een kans dat jy daak selfs jou toone afbuit. Dit is slecht vir jou tande, dit is een slechte idee om jou toonaals te kou. Jy moet ophou daarmee. Nee, goeie genuchtig, wat vang jy nou aan? Wacht, ek, ek dink jy het my daak verkeerd verstaan. Ek weet so waar nie, wat doen jy nou nie, maar ek het nie bedoel jy moet my toonaals kou nie. Gewoonlik as ek by die school praat, is daarom lekker om die kinders te oorlag. Hier kan ek jylle glad nie, maar die soek hoop my jylle het gelag. Hierdie ruimpiese naam is, ek hou van Brusselse spruitjies. I like Brussels sprouts. Ek hou van Brusselse spruitjies, van blauw kaas en tuna pastijn. Ek hou daarvan as my wekker my dou voordag wakker luid. Ek hou van die lang, lange rye wanneer ons inkoopies doen. Ek hou daarvan as outanies kom keier en my graag wil soen. Ek hou nie van lekkers of koek nie en roomhuis smaak rechtig net goor. Ek is mal oor die trotse gevoel as my ginstelingspan verloor. Ek hou van die reek van frot eiers die geskrul van die laaste skoolklok. Ek hou van moeilike somme. En by die keer hou ek van jok. Hier is een van my ginsteling ruimpies om my laaste tyd uh, voor te dra by skole. Ek het daarom die dag geslag die kans kreeg by rechte skole met die kinders te kon gaan keir. Ons moes nou allemaal wel gemasker optree, maar is so lekker om van hierdie ruimpie te lees. Die ruimpies naam is Sissy het ontsnap. 
Sissy het ontsnap, ons gesin is so geskop. Sissy hoort nie buiten nie, sy hoort in haar hok. Sissy het ontsnap, goeie griet, waar kan sy wees? Kruip sy dalkie ewers weg, recht onder ons nees? Soek onder die rustbank, soek onder elke bed. Soek in die tv-kamer en gaan soek in die toilet. Wat is dit wat daar achter die gordijne roer? Is dit sissy wat my maas' klerenkas uitloer? Oma staan op die tafel en sy sê, sy gaan daar bly, totdat ons vir sissy weer in haar hok kan kry. Dit is gaas in ons huis en die hamster lyk doodbang. Want sissy is my boetie, sy liewe troetel slang. And I can tell you a secret, in my office where I'm doing this presentation, I actually have my own uh, pet python uh, just behind the computer looking at me at the moment. Um, ek het so'n bykie van a, van a fobiese vrees, wanneer het kom by inspuitings. So, um, ons allemaal sien in die stadium uit na inspuiting, wat ons gaan verloos van die, van die virus wat op die oomlik in die licht is. Maar ek moet sê, ek is al klaar benauwd oor die, oor die spuit naald. En daarom het ek hierdie rijmpje geskryf om myself moed in te praat. A inspuiting is nie so erg. A inspuiting is nie so erg nie. Net a prikkie en dit is verby. En achterna, as jy soet was, kan jy selfs een suigstokkie kry. A inspuiting is nie so erg nie. Die geheim is om dapper te wees. Jy is mys al my groot, jy bibber vir nie so van vrees. A inspuiting is nie so erg nie. En ons is moos heel tyd by jou. Ons sal sekere maak dat jy ok is en ons sal jou hand stuif vasthou. Sommer gauw voel jy weer baard fris, weer recht verspeel en verpret. So rechtig pa, hou nou op weg, kryk daar onder die dokterse bed. Ek het so een uur gelede op Facebook beloof, as mense inskakel vir hierdie praaikie, sal ek hulle leer hoe om een baie besonder so ding te doen. Um, kinders sê baie keer my ruimpies by Aesthetfits voor, of doen het as inskrywings by kunstcompetities, en uh, ek wil hulle graag een techniek leer, en dit is hoe om een ruimpie onder water op te sê. Nou, ek het beloof, ek sal mense wat inskakel vandag wees hoe jy een ruimpie onder water op sê. Hierdie ruimpie sy naam is die geheim om enige ruimpie perfect onder water op te sê. En hier is die geheime bestanddeel. Balanceer net een glas water versichtig op jou kop en sê dan jou ruimpie onder water op. Mies mag maar kroek. Die laaste ruimpie waarmee ek gaan afsluit Sy naam is Jou Hond Lek. Now, for the English speaking viewers, um, when you, uh, there's a pun that you can have in Afrikaans with the word lek. Uh, if, a, if a tap is leaking, you say the kraan lek in Afrikaans. And also when a dog is licking, which is spelled differently in English, it's spelled exactly the same in Afrikaans. You say the hond lek. This poem is called Jou Hond Lek. Jou hond lek, kom help my, moet nie daar staan nie, jou hond lek, vir wat kan jy om nie gedra nie? Jou hond lek, dis akelig, kan jy om nie keer nie? Jou hond lek, het hy nie maniere geleer nie? Jou hond lek, my sok nat, oh, ek groe my dood. Jou hond lek, a plassie, hier recht op my skoot. Al die ruimpies kom uit, ek wil nou nie snaaks wees nie. Nou ja, toe, baie, baie dankie vir allemaal wat ingeskakel het. Dit was verskrikkelijke goed pret om vandag met julle te geselfs. Selfs al moes ons dit nou so op hierdie manier doen. Hoopelik, as alles voorbij is, kan ons allemaal weer saam in die boekwinkel skuier. Intussen ondersteun as een blief exclusive boeks hierdie uh, maand, met een kinderboek maand. Um, en geef vir jou kinders die grootste geskenk wat jy vir enige kind in jou leven kan gee. En dit is liefde verlees en liefde verboeken. Baie dankie dat jy ingeskakel het, geniet die naweek.